Arsenal Fan TV, Mo, what did you make of it today? Look, today we won. We showed cojones. You know, that's been the, be the buzzword for Arsenal recently. Uh, so I'm happy. I'm not going to come on here and be negative for the sake of just being controversial. It it's a good day out. When you come to Arsenal and you win, it's a good day out. Mm. I, think the, I think what it is, because Swansea, even I was guilty of this. I was coming here today, I say, yeah, 3-0. Ah, easy. <laughs> Standard win. And when we went 1-0 down, I was like, what? <laughs> this ain't in the script. But it's Premier League football, it's isn't exactly it? It's actually that, man. It's like, like we, we've got absolutely no right now to expect mm. us to come and roll teams over. I mean, I was even saying to you last a couple of weeks ago that we compete with teams. We don't dominate teams. So I don't really take any game as a given anymore. Mm. You know, if someone says to me when I'm on the way to the Arsenal, I'll give you a 1-0 today, I'll take it every single time, no matter who we're playing. Because we've seen shocks being thrown up in football regularly. You know, even, for example, um, West Ham beating Tottenham in the League Cup. No one saw that coming. You know, it's, mm. football is English football is just like that. It's insanely competitive. So any result, home or away, is a good result. So I'm, mm. I'm happy today. The thing is, what, what kind of frustrates me a little bit is that as Arsenal fans, I kind of feel like every time we concede a goal, every time we lose or draw a game, there's a massive inquest. Sometimes I think you need to be a little bit objective and say, do you know what? That's football. And Arsenal's goal that we conceded today is complete, complete, uh, perfect example of that. Koscielny's doing a good job tracking a man. He clips the back of his heels and it takes his legs out from underneath him. That happens in football. Anyone that has played football has had that happen to him. He's out of the game. You can't do anything about that. Bellerin hasn't maybe reacted as well yeah, as he could have. What's going on, yeah, So potentially Bellerin hasn't reacted as well as he could have. But how many seconds have passed from Koscielny slipping over, the Swansea attacker thinking, oh, I've got time and space, and then that slipping that ball on the inside? Mm. It's not that easy. You're not going to be perfectly yeah. positioned to be able to react to your, your um, you know, fellow defender slipping over. So look, I'll cut Bellerin some slack there. And Koscielny, it's not his fault. He can't do anything about that. Peter Cech has come out. He's made himself big. He's got you know, that typical star shape that keepers do. We've seen him pull off brilliant saves with it. One in this game itself as well, actually, when Mertesacker had dallied on the ball a little bit. And yeah, he slipped it through his legs. We've seen finishes like that non-stop. When Arsenal will score a goal like that, when you know someone gets free and Alexis rolls it through a keeper's legs or whatever, we don't blame the keeper. We praise our striker. We say, look, you know, fair enough, he mm. saw the gap and he put it there. So I think we've just got to turn around and say that was just an unlucky goal to concede today. Mm. And how we responded after half-time, response. brilliant response. Mm. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant response. Arsene Wenger, whatever he said, credit to him. It worked mm. today. So it came out early, didn't didn't they? Big time. They came out yeah. early. And you know, we're talking about, oh, we were expecting a 3-0 win and all that. Uh, that spell that Arsenal had where we scored the two goals and we looked relentless, we looked dangerous, we looked incisive. All of these elements of play that we can, we know Arsenal can do. If we did that for the 90 minutes, yeah, we would have won 3, 4, 5, 0. Mm. But Arsenal don't do that. Arsenal, I've said it how many times in the first half, we just kind of let the game slip by us. We weren't very good in the first half. We were giving the ball away. We were disjointed. We didn't have any sort of incision in our play. There was no fluency. And Swansea, look, they got lucky with a chance and they took they took advantage of it. But that's mm. football, man. You've got to, you've got to mm. be fair to your team sometimes. Now, next week against City. Um, Red Star first, man. Red oh, no, Star first. All right, old Red Star. Because, you, know, <laughs> you know, we've already... We, we, yeah, with with the Europa the League, we, we, even if we lost the Red Star, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah. City yeah. is the test. But yeah, look, you're right. We're, we're safe in the Europa League. We need like... Mm. I think one point or something to qualify, yeah. So, um, you know, we've got a week rest now and, and I don't want to see a single starter playing in that Red Star game. Let's just chill. And that game against City away, look, you know, is obviously going to be tough. No one is standing here claiming that we're the favourites for that game. Yeah, we all expect it to be a very difficult game and we're not going to be surprised if we lose. But we've seen with City in kind of recent weeks, they do have a tendency to switch off. Yeah, so if we can keep it... Uh, a tight game and don't let them have like uh, attacking freedom if we can just keep it compact and tight like Otamendi today in injury time injury time tried to chest it back to Edison and uh, he's conceded a goal you know like that mm. we saw it against Stoke conceding sloppy goals I know they went and then put seven past them mm. but they do have they do have that mm. tendency to be a little bit lax at the back Arsenal need to go there keep it compact and hopefully have a chance of taking advantage of one of these mistakes. Mm. The thing is, if Arsenal go there doing what we've heard Arsene Wenger does, where he says we're going to focus on ourselves and play our game, we will get battered. Mm. We have to respect the ability that Man City have got because they have shown in the league so far this season and against Napoli, one of the best teams in Europe right now, they have got a hell of a lot of attacking firepower. We have to respect them. We have to nullify their threats in terms of Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Gabriel Jesus. They are... 
a phenomenal attacking team. And if we don't try and nip that in the bud, we're going to be, you know, seriously coming unstuck against them. So hopefully mm. we can do that. The final thing, though, today, man, AGM. I have to talk about that. Mm. You know, last year, I remember Chips Keswick was incredibly patronising and condescending and rude. Just and the year before that, and the year before but that. Es year. Especially last year. He was especially rude. You know, some of the comments he made. Mm. And again, this year. I And last year, I remember saying that if someone doesn't possess the talent to, you know, or, or the necessary skills or the diplomacy to do that task, then take him out of the firing line. I think, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Ivan have to answer a question on behalf of Chips because he was just being really dismissive last year? And now this year again, when someone w says, oh, I would like to hear the major shareholder speak, and your response as the chairman is, read the Telegraph. I mean, that is disgusting. These are people... 200 big men in the room. It's you know unacceptable. I mean? it's adults. It's absolutely unacceptable. These shares trade at 15 to 20 grand a share, for God's sake. These are valuable shares, and people could sell them, make a quick buck, and not care where that share goes. But people that are financially and emotionally invested in the club, at least give them the respect that they deserve. It, it's absolutely unacceptable. You know, we talk about on the pitch. If someone's not good enough, we talk about replacing them on the pitch. At every level of this club, where is that sort of um, culture where if someone's not at the right level, don't put them in that position. Chips Keswick is not fit to address shareholders. He is not respectful enough. He is not the right man for that job. Do not embarrass the club by putting him up on the stage next year. Any one of the people standing here would do a better job than him. You know, they might not have the, the eloquence or whatever or, or that, <laughs> you know, the network Mm. that maybe gets you into those positions but in terms of just pure respect it's absolutely unacceptable and I was saying in the week these are not Arsenal men these are not Arsenal values that AGM should be an event where people feel respected and actually valued as you know as financially invested people in the club and I think it's disgusting and even Ivan Gazidis look you know he has definitely improved in terms, in terms of his performance as CEO. But to talk about a metric that does not matter to anyone in football, what was it, spend per points one? You tell me who's ever spoken about that before. I guarantee you, in two, three years' time, if we're not doing well in that points per, uh, spend per points, he won't bring that up. That's because it's not a KPI. It's something else. Exactly. He, that is pure convenience. I'm, and it really annoyed me to hear him say that because, come on, what the only thing that matters is trophies. That's the only thing that matters. If you distract yourself with other KPIs that you're making up in order to just um, you know, defend your position, be real with yourself. Be real with the fans and the shareholders. No one cares about that metric. Don't let stuff like that come out of your lips again. It's only trophies we talk about. Do spend over trophies if you want to do it over anything. Not points one. This is a made up stat. Still, I, I hope next year's AGM, I hope they learn some lessons because that was, in, you know, people talk about stuff being embarrassing for Arsenal Football Club. That was embarrassing for Arsenal Football Club. It does not, does not represent us.